Good morning, dear friends. Wonderful day to be together again during this few minutes of meditating God's word. And let us spend these few minutes at the feet of Jesus and listen to the voice of the Spirit. Today's meditation is centered around the letter Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, wrote, which has only one chapter. Verses 1 and 2. I read, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God, the Father, and kept by Jesus Christ. Today's meditation can be titled, The Picture of Believers. Believers are the called ones. They are those who have responded to the call of God. Believers are called to be saints. And so who is a saint in the sight of God? A saint is not the one who died hundreds of years ago and then some human committee will decide whether he or she is a saint or not. But according to the word of God, in almost all the letters that Paul wrote, for example, he has addressed the believers as saints. Who are saints, therefore? Someone who is called of God and who responded to the call or the invitation that Jesus gave. Come unto me and I will do what is needed to be done in your life. It is a call for salvation. And so believers are called to a heavenly hope as well. Called by God also means we are called and appointed to a very special task and duty. We are to serve Jesus Christ the Lord. The invitation was come unto me not do this or don't do that if you want to cease from sin come to jesus i will give you rest that's what jesus said what does that mean when jesus is calling us to come to him so that he may give us rest what does that really mean we usually think of rest as what as a lying down and sleeping or relax after the hard work the one thing we desire is a bed where we can stretch our legs and uh, relax and sleep it is a state of inactivity cease from work that is what rest for us means Jesus meant exactly the opposite when he says, I will give you rest. We think Jesus is saying, now listen to this very carefully. I will put you to sleep and I will put you to bed and hold your hand and sing you to sleep. That's what we think. In truth, Jesus is saying, I will put you to sleep. In truth, that is not what Jesus meant. In truth, Jesus is saying, I will get you out of sleep, out of bed. I will get you out of exhaustion, tiredness, out of the condition of a half dead. While you are alive, I will energize you. I will, with my spirit of life, you will find vitality and strength to be full of activity. That's what Jesus meant when he said, come to me, I will give you rest. I will remove all the exhaustion and tiredness and weariness 
and energize you, revitalize you so that you are full of life and full of strength and you are ready for any hard work. We are called not to sleep but uh, to a task. There is a chorus which says, Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. So give me power every hour to be true to you, to fulfill your task. And the second thing about a believer is, believers are loved by God. God holds you ever so close to his heart. You have believed in his son Jesus Christ. You have honored him and as Lord. Therefore, God the Father loves you. And so believers with a very special love, God holds you. And we are dear child of God, those who have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in his or her life, he is a child of God. And he is not looking at you and holding you as a, a dear friends or as a servant who serves you, but he is holding you, keeping you ever so close to his heart because you are precious. You are bought with that high price he paid on the cross. You must realize how special you are. The third thing about believers in this passage we notice is that believers are kept by Jesus Christ, our Lord. What does that mean? It means believers are guarded and protected by Jesus Christ, the Lord. And watched after. His eyes are always on the believers. A believer is someone who is watched over by God himself. When his eyes are on you, and when God himself is watching over you, is there any reason for you or me to be afraid of anything? No. Even if you walk through a strange place, he knows the way. He will guide you, and he will protect you, and he will guard you from all dangers. That's what it means. Strengthened by God to walk through all the trials and the temptations of life. Protected from all the enemies of life. There are so many enemies of life. Sickness, for example, is not a very good friend. The temptation is not good and right because that comes from, from the devil himself. His one reason, purpose and is to destroy you and your relationship with the loving God. Hallelujah. Thank God that our God is able to protect us from all this. And uh, then we are also escorted into heaven quicker than a twinkling of an eye, a blink of an eye. And when time comes for him, to leave this world, this God-given life, abundant and eternal. A believer also is given assurance of uh, God's presence and love through all of his life. He says, Lo, I am with you always, not once in a while, not once in a week, on a Sunday. No. His eyes are on you constantly and your hand is there to guide you and protect you continuously. Because this life you enjoy as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a child of God, is his own life. And that's why 
he will protect his own life that you carry only thing is you display his life day after day not your life and then you can experience god's presence you are kept by him who has control and who has conquered the devil himself satan he has conquered hell he has conquered death he has conquered all the enemy of our souls temptations and and trials and afflictions sicknesses and all kinds of problems pain and sorrow these are not good friends of man but we have to go through all these things in this life because that's what sin brought to us but we are not to be afraid because he is alive and lastly believers are the ones who have received mercy peace and love of god see that pri believers privileges how rich a believer in jesus christ is and it's also say jesus own words because i live you also will live this is a believer's life hallelujah it is not a dying kind of life it is a living kind of life and if you remain faithful to this lord and honor him and walk in obedience and in uh, uh, worship and uh, live in the service of god you can be assured that you will be taken to be with him forever and ever to live and to reign forever this is a believer's life and this is your life live it and enjoy it and be ready to meet your creator when he comes god bless you father in the name of jesus i thank you for your people thank you those who have heard this message short message let it bring that encouragement that confidence that joy in their heart in their heart thank you lord for using us for your glory that others also may know this joyous life and share with them in jesus name amen this is a wonderful day a great day have a great and enjoyable day amen